Good morning to all connoisseurs of chaos, at least it's morning here, back in Middle Land where you can see my clock says 20 to 11 on a bright Sunday morning. So this is me trying out a few things. Firstly I'm trying out some new uh, screen capture software which is part of a Filmora suite which uh, looks like that. That's what I produce all my videos in. Um, it also has this uh, wonderful facility where it can record what I'm doing on the screen. I thought this might be a groovy way to show you how I do a little bit of editing, which on the surface of it seems a bit boring, but uh, it's uh, something that not many people are aware of. Editing often takes at least as much time, if not more, than writing the first draft of a story. So I thought I'd take you through the sort of things I do. Um, Right, so I'm editing Coffin Dodgers and I'm on a bit of a rush with this because I want to get it out by the end of January, which means I've got to count back a week um, to send it out to beta readers and reviewers. So really this all has to be done and dusted and formatted uh, by the end of December. So I think I'm going to be busy. Right, so I am going to need the document. I'll tell you what, I will start by showing you how the first draft was produced. It's in this program called Scrivener, which uh, some of you will be aware of. And uh, if I look at my recent projects, <clears throat> it's here, Coffin Dodgers. So this is what I wrote the um, first draft in. Here it is, all the chapters, and it was fairly rough and ready. I printed that out and um, basically laid it aside for a month. Then I read it through it in with a fine tooth comb and took into account the uh, comments from three beta readers that I put it out to and now I'm at the stage of incorporating everything so I've got my notes and three inputs that I've got to put into the editing process so I'm going to go out of that because I don't use Scrivener for editing I export it out to Word and here's the Word document and it's already laid out with a template that I got from uh, Derek Murphy who nice chap that he is he provides them free of charge um, this may well change in format because I'm going to put it out through something called press books and uh, I'll maybe leave that till another time to tell you what that's about. So here we are with the title page. It's got this uh, sort of sci-fi font for the title, Coffin Dodgers. We've got the um, copyright information there and I've even made a chapter list out. Page numbers have to go in yet because I won't know those until I've finished the editing. Uh, there's some blanks here. I've yet to sort out who the acknowledgements are going to be. There will be quite a long list, I imagine, to people who've helped bring this particular book to fruition. My usual sales blurb page for people who want to read more and sign up to my Connoisseurs of Chaos uh, reader list. And then we're into the first of the appendices. I've put these at the beginning because it sets the scene for this particular story, which is a sci-fi horror, and it's based on a planet called Atrocitas. And people need, I think, a bit of background to understand the setting without me having it slow up in the narrative. So I decided to put that in as uh, an appendix there. I've also got a character list, and uh, that will help set the readers in place for reading. Now, I've already edited Chapter 1, and uh, I'm going to slip forward to Chapter 2 here. And I've already started to put in the corrections, of which there might be uh, quite a number. Now there's a wonderful little tool that I've subscribed to called Pro Writing Aid. It's a plugin for Word here, and this does a wonderful job of scanning all of the writing and picking out not just grammar and spelling mistakes and typos, but it looks at things like word proximity, something called passive voice, uh, overuse of adverbs and a whole host of other things as well which help tighten up the writing. So because I haven't been able to afford an editor for this particular book um, I will be doing for the next one mind you but because uh, I haven't got an editor for this one I'm heavily reliant on Pro Writing Aid to pick up a lot of the mistakes. So what you do is you simply highlight the text and this chapter's a long one compared with the first there we go. Oh, I skipped by a few chapters. That's chapter four. We don't want to go that far. Scroll up and we get to... where has it gone? Chapter two, headlong flight. Ah, that's it. I, chapter three is down there. OK, so we highlight that. Uh, all I have to do then is basically hit this. And I'm going to do the full analysis, although I won't use absolutely all of the tools that are in there. 
Now, as you can see, things are churning away. It's analysing the text up here, and it's going through all of these particular analyses. I'll probably use about half of them, and I'll show you maybe one or two, just so as not to bore you too much. So it's churning away. Just take a little time, this. So you can imagine if I'd selected the whole of the book, I'd probably have to go away and uh, have a meal or have a, a sleep for an hour before this finish. So I'm doing it chapter by chapter. For those of you who uh, want to be writers, you can access this for free on the web, but you can't keep any of the um, settings. So you've got to basically edit on the fly and then export it out of the web-based version. So that didn't take too long. Here we are. Uh, so in the right-hand panel, it uh, gives an overall view of things that it's picked up. Uh, so let's just go into the overview report there. And it says it's found uh, 11 issues. Green ticks are good. So it says the average sentence length there is about 14.8, which is good for readability. Um, I've got a variety of sentences, and it even gives some statistics there, which I do understand, but probably I'm never going to use. Um, and it's good. It's got a green tick, so a variety in terms of length, presumably. Um, it helps split things up there. No long sentences found, which I'm surprised at, um, because usually I overdo it on the long sentences front. So it's a sign that maybe my writing style is starting to get a bit tighter on first draft. Average reading age. Now this ideally needs to be not necessarily as low as possible, but a low, lot lower than you might think. And it's given it a tick because it's 7.3. So although this is an adult novel, it's got lots of gore and all sorts of other things that you wouldn't necessarily want to, the average nine-year-old to witness and take in. Uh, the actual reading age is quite low, and, and that's seen as a good thing. Anyone from Lee Child through to Stephen King will tell you that. Um, and it's got all these various reading um, metrics here, which again I don't understand, but if you did it would provide you that, with that information. It says it's found no passive verbs, uh, although it will find some passive voice, which we'll get onto in a minute. Um, passive index I don't even understand that one. It has found some sticky sentences. Um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. And the glue index, this is all about how your sentences pan out and how the reader actually reads them uh, and can sometimes come a bit unstuck with the meaning because of the way you've constructed the sentences. OK, so I am going to go back to the home list. And this is the one that I find interesting, overused words. It's picked up three. Um, and these are things that can really jar on a reader's experience. And you'll see some uh, very interesting ones here. Uh, if I put that up there, can you see that word felt? Um, and it's a word that I hardly like to use at all, and yet it creeps in. Um, so this is a bit of narrative here about one of the main characters, Wade. Um, and it's the heroine, Eden, thinking about Wade. And she says it felt like he'd got her back, a protective offer she wasn't so emancipated to refuse. Um, so it doesn't like the word felt, and that's because there's always a better way of getting you into that scene. Now, sometimes it gives you some suggestions, <clears throat> and it just says, remove one of these. Well, I'd like to do better than that. And not only do I want to remove it, but I'd like to do the writing better. Um, so. Often you can just improve things by missing bits out. So rather than have like and all of those things, what about just putting, he'd got her back. So she's thinking, he's got her back. A protective cover, da -de da 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 I just shortened it. And I'm quite happy with the way that's come out there. So we then move on uh, to the next one. And the word saw. This is often a word that can be missed out because it's taken for granted that people see things with their eyes and you really just want the description of what they're looking at. So Eden looked up and saw Wade hurtling toward her from out of the blue. Um, so they've just jumped out of the spacecraft here and they're sort of making touchdown or landfall on the planet, planet Atrocitas. She looked up and saw Wade hurtling. Right, so we can again just m move that out. She looked up. And to add a bit of sort of dramatic effect there, I'm just going to make that a really short sentence. She looked up. Hurtling is an ing word, which can lead you into the pat passive voice. We want to make this a bit more active. So rather than say Wade was hurtling, I'm just going to put Wade hurtled 
toward her. Now, toward or towards? In American spelling, I think it was... Um, oh, what's his name? Elmore Leonard said that you should always spell it toward. Um, sometimes in English, uh, towards is allowed, and I am English, so I'm going to put that in. Wade hurtled towards her from out of the blue. Simple statement. Let's see if it pans out. Now that she was airborne, the last vestige of anxiety evaporated, and she drank in the exhilaration of free fall. She knew that her ripcord had to be pulled at 2,500 feet, which gave her about one whole minute to enjoy the pleasure of unfettered freedom. She looked up. Wade hurtled towards her from out of the blue. Yeah, I quite like that. So, move on. Anyway, that's uh, enough of that. That gives you an insight into this particular level of editing. Would that be the end of it? Um, yes and no. Once I've gone through all the chapters like this, then... Um, I will then have to format it, and it's often when you format the book and try to export it as um, a Kindle version or an EPUB version or a PDF that you pick up little <clears throat> errors that you wouldn't have noticed the first time through. So what I tend to do is format it, put it out, and then I read through the whole thing again, usually on my iPad. Um, and then hopefully, once it's all done and dusted, it's ready to put out to reviewers. So that is that. I hope you found it moderately interesting. Feel free to um, ask any questions. I'll put this on YouTube so you can put it in the comments or if you're receiving this link by newsletter then send me a message by email or you can even put comments on my website. So thank you for joining me and we'll see you soon, connoisseurs of chaos.